All right, we're going to move on now to um, Jimmy Garcia. I would hesitate to make the argument, and maybe I shouldn't hesitate, Karen. I'm just going to throw it to you. Was he potentially, possibly, arguably, the Blue Jays' kind of most underrated bullpen arm last year? Uh, yeah, very possible. He, he he went out and he did everything that was asked of him. And they, they relied on him, and he very rarely disappointed. He was one of the better guys out there. And honestly, a pretty good pickup in the offseason last year. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I like him. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, Steve, same question to you. Same question. Uh, is is he underrated? I think, he's, I think he's greatly underrated. I mean, again, he's been a closer, you know, in the majors. I think, though, that Jimmy Garcia is going to have more real impact on the Blue Jays season than stats uh, will necessarily give him credit for because he's the kind of pitcher that can literally pitch in various situations and and actually have a positive impact on the game. So I'm I'm going to say that yeah he is he is definitely underrated and if if you're a numbers geek you're going to hate Jimmy Garcia except for maybe strikeout numbers but you really need to pay attention to what his real impact on the game is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. I think uh, my camera has stopped working. Um, so we're doing the world a favor here and we're just getting the <laughs> the silky smooth sound of, of uh, my voice. Uh, for uh, I thought it was a Wizard of Oz effect. I, I, I didn't realize that. <laughs> I, I thought it was intentional to make it seem like it was of some um, um, you know, omnipotent being up there speaking <laughs> down to the masses. If only, only. (laughs) that's right. (laughs) Um, Yeah, well, anyway, I'm going to soldier on here, uh, camera less. uh, But um, I want to talk about one thing that I think that um, the the bullpen pieces. One one thing that's really important to the bullpen pieces, you have to be able to limit the number of home runs, Um, and. And and Rocket chiming in here disagrees that Simber might have been the most uh, underrated, um, and uh, you know, that's that's not a bad that's not a bad call. Um, but getting back to Jimmy Garcia, one thing that um, stands out to me was his home runs um, per nine innings last year was zero point eight nine. A big reason why he was successful. Um, however, looking ahead to next season, Karen, um, it looks like. He's projected to go all the way up to 1.41 home runs per nine innings. That changes his role dramatically. So, Karen, I I saw the reaction. You can't see my reaction to your reaction, but I can see yours. (laughs) But talk to me about Jimmy Garcia and his home runs per nine innings and whether or not you feel uh, as worried as those projections make it seem. Yeah, see, th- this is why I don't pay a lot of attention to projections. Like, you, you look at something like that that's just so silly and out of the blue. I, I mean, maybe maybe he regresses a little bit from having a really good season last year, but I don't see him regressing that much unless he's injured and doesn't tell anyone or they just overwork him to the point where his arm falls off. I mean, no, <laughs> that's I don't know where they came up with that, but no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Steve, going to you, the are you as concerned with his um, ability to give up the the long ball? And the reason I ask, like, this isn't something that's new to him. You know, um, going back to 2019 with the Dodgers, he had a home run of per nine of 2.17, uh, and the year before that, it was 2.82. So that's- this is not this is not something that uh, you know is unfamiliar territory for Jimmy Garcia. So. How concerned are you that what happened last year with his ability to limit the home run, how concerned are you that that's not going to continue? I'm not concerned at all. And and even if it's at one or like 1.05 or you know, some kind of number, I mean, I mean, I'm okay. Relievers are going to give up home runs based on 
where how they're used. Now, if he's your ninth inning closer, which he's not going to be on this team, mm-hmm. uh, you don't want a number over one, probably, as far as home runs being surrendered by your closer. But if you're coming in and in true leverage innings in the sixth or the seventh or the eighth, and there's nobody on base, you know, maybe you try to set a hitter up and hitters up for an entire series and you try to sneak, let's say, a slider in where maybe it might call for a fastball or, or a breaking ball away. And maybe you give up the home run because the slider doesn't quite have the bite it should. So I, I think when you're talking about you know projecting home runs, you have to also take it into the context of what the situation is when they gave up the game, gave up the home run. And that ties into an, a reliever's ERA sometimes. Okay, you know, if you got runners on base, that's why the, the ERA is going to be inflated because maybe he's only pitching a third inning or two two thirds of an inning, but he gave up a three run homer. That's different than maybe facing the first batter of an inning or a second batter of an inning and there's nobody on, and you're just you're really trying to set up the hitters for an entire series, and you make a mistake and someone knocks it out for a solo shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, not all home runs are created equal. Um, Karen, we're going to jump right into our next over and under. Uh, in 2022, uh, this actually number surprised me. I don't know why. Um, the number of holds that Jimmy Garcia had, he had 22 holds, uh, which is kind of impressive um, because I did not see it being that high. Regardless, 22 holds uh, projected at 15 next season. Karen, do you take the over or the under on the number of holds that Jimmy Garcia sees? I might go a little bit under that. And in saying that, it's not that his performance is going to drop drastically. Right right now, I'm taking the optimistic viewpoint um, that they're going to have a number of different leverage options down there that they can rely on. And that's the the eighth inning or a hold situation or whatever you want to look at it. It's not necessarily going to be just his. They'll rotate. If he's pitched a couple days in a row, they'll give him a couple days off because they'll have other guys who can get the job done and they can rely on. So I'll go a little under. Okay. And Steve, over or under um, on 15 holds for Jimmy Garcia? Uh, I'm going over. I, I think the hold is one of those that people just don't look at unless you're in a fantasy league. You just don't you don't really understand how valuable that it is um, because you can get a hold for a variety of different reasons. Again, some of them are cheap, you know, you, you know, but but basically, you know, I think a hold really shows a, a pitcher that's being consistently very good to excellent. And I think that's what we're talking about with Jimmy Garcia here for 2023. So I'm going to go over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm actually going to take the under uh, because I think the addition of Eric Swanson will impact that. Uh, But I I agree with Karen that I think right now things look pretty good uh, as far as how the bullpen will be set up. Um, Of course, uh, one of the, another factor will come up here in a minute, Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the under uh, because I think there's more, there's more wealth to be spread around, I think. Um, but we'll see rains to be seen, but that's my, that's my bet. Um, and I'm going to remind everybody to download the bet stamp app using the code JFTC and start betting like a pro.